Alright then gang, we have seen earlier in the series how to use built-in commands and actually we've been using them ever since. Things like the model command and the settings command and the init command to generate a Gemini markdown file. But we can also make our own custom commands which we can then run the same way by using a forward slash and then the command name. And those commands can be detailed prompts which take in arguments and instruct the model to do something. For example, you might make a bug fix command which tells the model to scan for bugs and suggest fixes or you might have a command to run a series of git commands and push to a remote repo. In this lesson, we're going to make a custom command which tells the model to create a new UI component based on user input. And then whenever we want to make a new custom UI component like an avatar or a button or something else, then we can just use that component command. So then, how do we make a custom command? Well, first of all, we need to make sure we've got a .gemini folder in the root directory. If you don't already have one, create that first of all. Then inside that, we need to make a new folder called commands. So do that next. And it's inside this folder, we'll make any custom commands. Now to register a new command, we need to make a file for it. And this should be a .toml file, where the file name matches the command name itself. For example, if I make this new file and call it component.toml, then the command name in the chat would be forward slash component. All right, so now inside this, we need to add a couple of keys and values. The first key should be called description, and the value of that should be a string, which describes the command in just a few words. And we're going to see that description then if we try to use the command in the CLI. So I'm going to write the string creates a new UI component and test file. The next key we need is one called prompt. And the value of that should be the entire prompt we send to the model when this command gets run. So the value needs to be a multi-line string. And instead of me writing all of this out from scratch, I'm just going to paste it in and then we'll walk through it. Now, before we start reading this, I want to bring your attention to this args value in double curly braces, because this is how we access any additional user arguments or input that comes after the command itself. For example, when we eventually run this command, we type forward slash component, which is the command name. And then after that, we type maybe a brief description of the type of component that we want to build. Now that description, the text content that comes after the command name is captured automatically in the args value, which we can instruct Gemini to use. Anyway, now let me walk through this whole command from the start. All right then, so first of all, let me just turn on word wrap so we can see this better. And then we'll go through it and it says right here, before doing anything, run a shell command to see if there's any uncommitted, unstaged or untracked changes on the current branch. If there are uncommitted, unstaged or untracked changes, abort this process and tell the user, do not go any further. So basically, whenever I want Gemini to create a new component like this, I want it to work on a new branch. And we can't really switch to a new branch if we're working on something in our current working directory, right? If we have those uncommitted changes, I don't want to do this. So I'm going to tell the user to maybe stash those changes or commit them or whatever. Anyway, then we carry on. You will be making a new view component for the Nuxt app as described here. And this is the arguments that we had. So the user description, right? So if we say uh, a card component with X, Y, Z, it's going to know about that. Your job is to one, derive a safe branch name based on that component description. The format of the branch should be component forward slash slug, where slug should be lowercase letters, kebab case, and relatively short, but descriptive. So it's creating this branch name based on the component description that we give it from the arguments. Okay, so number two, switch the user branch, uh, switch the user to the branch, it should be like that. You have chosen and the git command you intend to run, e.g. git switch C component avatar. Okay, so no, that was correct. I'm saying show the user the branch name. All right, okay. Number three, run a shell command to switch to the new branch. If there's uncommitted changes, tell the user about the process and do not continue. So again, I'm just making it abundantly clear here. Do not continue if there's any uncommitted changes. All right, so the, next, create a new test file for the component in the test Nux directory and write a small suite of meaningful tests based on the expected behavior of the new component. Do not run the test yet. Then make the new component in the components directory. The name of the component can be derived from the component description and should be camel case. Keep file names consistent with existing conventions. And then number six, when the component is created, run the test for the component to make sure they all pass. If some fail, fix the component and rerun the test until they all pass. 
once everything passes, render examples of the new component in the preview page. Now notice, I've already created that preview page right here. It's empty at the minute, and I'm telling Gemini to render the new component in that preview page so we can view it in a browser once it's created it. And then finally, briefly summarize what you have done to the user. So really, this is just like one gigantic prompt, right? And when we run the uh, component command now in the Gemini CLI, it's just going to send this prompt or rather follow this prompt. And it's going to look at the current state of the uh, repository, see if there's any untracked or uncommitted changes. It's gonna stop the process if there is and tell the user. If not, it's gonna go ahead, make a new branch, uh, switch to that branch, and then it's gonna start making a test file first, then a component, run the test, make sure they all pass. When everything passes, it's gonna render the component in the preview page, and then we can view it in a browser. Okay, so now we've got this command created, let's try using it. So I'm gonna close this command file, then open the side panel where Gemini is. Now, when you make a new command, you'll need to quit the current session and restart Gemini again for it to pick that command up. So you can do that by using the quit command and just hitting enter, that's gonna bring us out of the session. And then we can start everything back up again by typing Gemini and pressing enter. Now to test the instructions of this command properly, I'm gonna go ahead and make a change in the project, just maybe inside the readme file. Doesn't really matter what the change is, just that we have some kind of unstaged or uncommitted change in the repo because I said in the command to abort the process if there were, and that's what I'm testing right now. So let's come over to the chat window and we can start typing out the new component command. And as we do that, we can see the command listed down here with the description next to it. Okay, so now we need to also provide a brief description of the component, which I'm just gonna paste in right now. And that says a circular avatar component, which takes in an initial prop and a BG color prop, which should be limited to a few color choices. All right, so let's hit enter now and see what happens. And so you can see now it wants to run git status so it can check out the status of the current branch. So yes, let's allow that. All right, and now it says, I see uncommitted, unstaged, or untracked changes in the current branch, and it's shown us where those are. It says it's aborting the process as requested. Please commit or stash your changes before proceeding. Awesome, so that all works. I wanted to test that out, and I'm just gonna commit these things now right here, like so, and then I'll come back over here, and let's try this again. I'm gonna say forward slash components, and in fact, if you just press the up and down arrow keys, you can go to the previous uh, commands you've run. So I'm gonna press up to go to the previous one and then I'll press enter again. And again, it's asking to run git status, which I'm gonna allow it. All right, and then it wants to switch to a new branch. So I'm gonna say yes for this as well, awesome. And then right now it wants to create a test file. I'm just gonna say yes, allow always and press enter. Okay, right now we can see it wants to run the test for the new component. So let's say yes, and I'm gonna allow always. Okay then, so it looks like it's done everything and it's also given us a summary at the end of what it's done because remember in that custom command we wrote, if we cross this off, it says briefly summarize what you have done to the user. So now it's given us that summary at the end right here and it says it created and switched to a branch called component forward slash avatar. Then it added the dot avatar class and color modifier classes to the main .css file. It created the avatar component with initials and BG color props. It created the tests for it and verified that all tests pass. And then it added examples of the avatar component showing various colors to the preview page. So I'm just gonna quickly, and I mean very quickly, go through the code. Normally I would go through it in more detail to make sure absolutely everything is fine but I wanna speed this up. So let me first of all go to the test file to see what it's done. And if we take a look at this file, you can see we've got a test suite right here. So it checks it renders the initials correctly, applies the correct background color, uh, uses a default background color when none is provided and validates allowed colors. All right, so we have all those tests and they all pass. 
Now, if we go into the components folder, we can see this new component right here. It looks pretty simple. We have the props defined where the initials are a string, the BG color are one of these things right here, red, blue, green, yellow, gray, or purple. Uh, the props with defaults. All right, so the default uh, prop for the BG color is gray. That's like a fallback one. And then we create a BG class using the computed function. And these are the allowed ones, return allowed. Okay, so fair enough. So this is just checking we've passed through one of the allowed ones. If not, then we fall back to the avatar gray. Otherwise we construct the avatar hyphen and then whatever the color is. All right, so then we have this div with a class of avatar and then another class, which is the B, uh, BG class we created right here. And then we display the initials inside. It also added styles, which are going to be in the assets folder right here. So if we scroll down, it's probably gonna be right at the bottom, isn't it? Because that's what it did most recently. We have the avatar class, and then we have all the different color classes for the avatar as well. Everything looks okay. And I'm now gonna try this out in a browser. All right, so I'm just on the preview page now, and we can see that Gemini has output several different variations of the avatar component to this page, which is nice. We can see all the color variations, plus a variation right here where we just use one initial instead of two, and that looks good as well. We've got what I presume is the default color here when we don't pass in the BG color prop as well. So that's all very good, right? Now, if we ever want to create a new UI component, we can just use that custom component slash command. We can give it a brief description and then the Gemini CLI is gonna go ahead and create that component. But not only that, it's gonna create a test for the component as well to make sure everything works correctly. And it will create a preview of the component right here. So we can take a look in a browser before we start using it elsewhere. Awesome.